Ireland is famed for its lush green pastulant, but it is defined by our waters. From the benign Irish Sea on our east coast to the Black Atlantic on the west, the sea runs through our blood. Our lakes and our rivers course through our veins. It defines our culture and warms our welcome to those who would come to visit us. The sea has protected our sense of self and the ocean has transmitted our unique culture around the world. It has engendered our sense of adventure, our curiosity to see what lies beyond. And to bring home again and again the fruits of our travels so that we may grow and prosper within our global village. The seas around us and the vessels they carry are the root of our history and of our evolution. They form our trade, our climate, and indeed, our landscape. They are at once our greatest danger and our greatest opportunity. We have roamed the seas from St. Colum Kill, who founded a monastery on Iona in 563, to St. Brendan, the navigator, who sailed for seven years, spreading Christianity in the ninth century. And there are those that say he reached America. Through the Viking and Norse invaders who formed our first major towns, Dublin, Cork, Wexford, and Limerick, to the Spanish Armada and our famine ships. Perhaps of all of our boats, our currucks, our cots, our hookers, our yawls, and coracles, none is as evocative as the tall ship. The sight of those magnificent timber vessels with rigging and sails, incomprehensible to the landlubber, coursing a path through a heavy sea, its deck and rigging a hive of activity is a symbol of man's mastery of his environment. It is as exciting as it is dangerous as it is romantic. This is a visual narrative of our tall ships that will speak to you of the Asgard, of the Astrid as she sank off Kinsale, the Dunbrody and of the young people from the north and south of Ireland who built the Genie Johnson and who plan now to build a new Asgard. This is the Tall Ships of Ireland. <laughs>